Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. This is the CZ600 American in 223. Well, you've seen the rifle in use. Um, frankly, there is nothing negative to say about this rifle, but let's look at some of the details of it. As you can see, I was using a sound moderator on it, screws on, 15 by one thread, it's totally smooth, and the crown is equally neat, perfectly finished with a little 11 degree dish on it. No problems there at all. 17 millimeter diameter barrel, it's cold hammer forged, 610 millimeters or 24 inches long. So you do get good velocities. If you go through the video and actually look at some of the velocity figures, what's published on the boxes and what pops out of the barrel, it's generally about 100 feet per second short of what's on the box on the lighter ammunition, but you do get some great speed off those 35 grain NTX bullets. The one that's closest to it actually is the most modest, which is a Celio and Bellow 69 grain, but it will stabilise up to 73 grain bullets and it did stabilise the 73 grain Hornady um, ELD M bullets, which were a superb longer range bullet. Now, the weather didn't really combine very well for me, so I didn't shoot any super long ranges, but fundamentally, as you can see from the group shot on paper to 100 metres, um, there's no problem with the accuracy and consistency of this rifle. You might be picking, say, accuracy's out. Well, yes, but you'll maybe notice that I always, always shoot groups away from exact point of aim, just so that when I'm going through different ammunition types, I'm not clustering bullets everywhere and destroying my point of aim, because I don't really want to be walking backwards and forwards, resetting cameras and targets every single set of ammunition. Scope mounting was straightforward. I've put here two Picatinny bases on it, no problem at all. It's Remington 700 compliant, and this is the mini action. It's in steel, so with a Picatinny base like this or a Picatinny rail you could add to it, you've got hugely versatile scope mounting opportunities. And I just put this 2 to 16 element optic on it, which is a nice one just for shooting groups for um, a 223 rifle. Nothing is magically required to do anything super duper with it. You don't really need to polish this rifle to make it look shiny, you could say that. Um, other fact is right the forend fully free floating it remains fully free floating and the forend is stiff i did shoot it from a tripod clamped in and there was no point of impact shift but then again when you realistically look at it you're not quite as accurate and consistent shooting off a tripod as you are from say prone or at a bench but you know fundamentally i hit the targets i was looking at stood at the front bipod mounting secure stood at the back equally you can put your sling on no problems at all now let's talk about the bolt the bolt system is super smooth. It's a semi-controlled feed, so it's very, very smooth in operation. You'll notice if you watch through the video, I operate this rifle in certain different sort of styles. Some of the time, I'll pop the magazine out and I'll load the magazine manually. It's a top loading magazine, so it takes two columns and you can just click them in the top, no problem at all. 
that also has the benefit that you can click them in the magazine while the magazine's in the gun too. So that's a second versatility. Now, some of the rounds you'll see me drop is just drop in the ejection port, close the bolt. Again, you've got no issues with just push feeding rounds, even though it's a semi-controlled feed bolt. But one of the things you'll notice most is that depending on the bolt speed with which I operate the rifle, you'll notice the difference in ejection. Most of the time, when shooting from the bench, I was opening the bolt slowly, and you come up against this small spring, and you can see as I just give the bolt that last little flick like that, it just sort of drops the, the, the empty brass out onto the bench, so you're not flicking them all over the floor. Contrary to that, you'll see it sometimes I'm shooting from the bench. And just to show you, I give it fast operation and you can hear the, the brass, you know, wrangling along the floor and making a bouncing noise and a whole load of racket. Bolt lift is at 60 degrees. If he's super smooth, you can flick it open with your fingers. There's no problem with primary extraction actually drawing the brass from the chamber itself. And I cannot criticise the operation of this rifle at all because... Most shooters, I think, will have only really ever used automatic ejectors, whereby you drink, bring the bolt back as slowly as you like, but as slowly as you like, as soon as it goes past the ejection, it will flick the brass out because that plunger is on a spring. Whereas here, that plunger is basically totally reliant on how fast you pull against that stock. So you have got the versatility. It's nothing misfunctional about it, it's just something some shooters might have to get used to. People who want to take great care of their brass for reloading will seriously appreciate a manual ejector like this. But that doesn't stop you. And as you can see when I'm shooting from the sticks, you know, fast bolt operation flicks the brass far and wide just as you would in a normal hunting scenario. Looking at the magazine in a bit more detail, push button on the front, drops the magazine out. There's no issues with that and it doesn't snag. If you want to flick that switch forward, the magazine is now locked in position, you can't lose it. And of course that ties in with the fact you can top load the mag while it's in the rifle. But there's no issues with it dropping out accidentally or anything like that. Everything about it works perfectly. Now while the rifle's upside down, we can see here there's the bottom of the safety catch. If I put it back the other way up, the safety catch is a push button goes through the back of the tang here. So down is fire and up is safe. If I just pop that down, safe, dry fire, and there we go. Cycle it as normal. The only time you really notice it is that when your hand's wrapped around the stock, your, your thumb kind of rests within there. So you kind of have that instant tactile feeling and know that the rifle is ready to fire or not. And of course, as you can see from here, I can manipulate that very easily without moving far. And the other thing is, if you want to be really super quiet, well, with your thumb on top of there and your finger underneath, it's actually totally silent to use the safety catch as well. Now with the safety catch on, the bolt is locked, but if you use the bolt release button there, the bolt will still open safely. And again, with it on fire, open the bolt and use the button and the bolt comes out. You can see here, it's a three lug bolt and it's a semi-controlled feed face. Now, if I just manipulate that button there, you can see that this is actually the ejector pin here, which is what flicks that brass case out, depending on how hard you cycle the bolt. And then that, just go back in the rifle, and we've got a super smooth operation. It's a superb action. So many shooters have said, oh, why have CZ gone away from the 550, you know, the controlled feed, the old Mauser style, this, that, and the other. I think they've just moved on. 
and this gives you everything the Mauser style action does, yet you've got a little bit more sort of buttery smoothness, compliance, you can push feed around, you don't have to rely on that full length extractor claw clipping over the cartridge if you have to load in an emergency. And I've just had a, a customer ask me, um, I need a rifle that I can single load if I have to. And he's moving away from a Mauser action on a very classic rifle, but he just doesn't like that factor of it. And of course, there are pros and cons to every system, but I think it's a little bit wrong to be totally stuck in the past and not realize that the Mauser extractor claw and the Mauser action was made in that way in, in 1898, I think it was, purely because that was the capability at the time. This is the capability now. Now, I'll just show you on the underside, if I just get my Allen key, you can see here we've got the four stage adjustable trigger. And I will do the weights on those just so you can all be totally clean on them. It's a little bit fiddly just to get that Allen key in there. But essentially, once you've got that Allen key in there, you've got lovely strong firm details on four stages of the trigger mechanism. So let's start weighing these now. This is going to be safe dry fires. I'm just going to pop that down there set the um, trigger gauge running. So, first stage here, we've got a break of seven, sorry, 473 grams, which is one pound 0.7 ounces. So if I cock this again, and I go to the next stage, reset that, Second measurement here is 804 grams, which is one pound 12.4 ounces. Reset that. Uh, I just need to take this Allen key out. Obviously, you're not gonna be swapping this all the time, so although it looks a little bit fiddly when I'm doing it, you'll probably only do it once, and then you, you're kind of done with it forever. But the joy of having these strong sprung detents on it is, if you wanna swap between, say, a summer setting and a winter setting, you can go exactly back to your preferred position. So, third measurement now. We've got 1134 grams, which is two pound eight ounces. And then, just for the very last one, as I say, it's just a tiny little bit fiddly. These Allen keys, or this Allen key is supplied with the rifle. That's onto stage four now. Just nip that out of there. Another safe dry fire. Set it in grams. That's 372 grams now. So obviously we must have started on stage two and we're back to stage one now. So 372 grams is 13.1 ounces. And if I now just go back to that stage we started on, which apparently was stage two and not stage one, which is my mistake there. You can feel that nice strong click there. Reset this. I'm oh, back to 550 grams, which is one pound 3.4 ounces. Now you may remember when I did the first measurement, it was a little bit of a fiddle just to get the um, actual trigger gauge in around the Allen key, but that's done now and that's back to stage two, which is where I prefer to shoot it, sort of 500 grams, about a pound. It's a fairly precision rifle, to be honest. It doesn't look like one, but it certainly shoots like one and I can't criticize it at all.
Now, when you're actually shooting the rifle, things like length of pull come into account a lot. This has got a 355mm 14-inch length of pull, which I think is pretty much the basis around which most rifles should be developed. If you need to, you can cut the stock shorter. If you really want to, you can make it longer. But for a sporting rifle, for the vast majority of European shooting styles, that will work beautifully. And of course, it looks lovely. It's an ambidextrous Turkish walnut stock with a very, very classic line to it, yet it doesn't look old fashioned. It's got a sort of a modern swoop to it. Nice checkering on the grip here and on the forend. Forend underneath has got checkering too. There's not too much embellishment on it, and I just think it, it, it looks subtle yet refined, which I do like a lot. Operating it, shooting it, no problem at all. You can see that in the video. And that nine inch twist straight, six groove barrel, cold hammer forged, it shoots and it shoots and it shoots. And of course, in a 223, it makes for an incredibly shootable rifle. And although you might think this is only a hunting rifle, and it's certainly not a range rifle or a super long range rifle, target rifle, this kind of thing it was actually incredibly consistent to shoot and I didn't get any point of impact shift. The cold hammer forged barrel is clearly very well annealed and I was super happy with that because like the other CZ600s I've used, it really has done exactly what it was supposed to do and all the dimensions, all the units, all the measurements, all the descriptions have been true to what CZ say on their own website. It's not a kind of website written by marketeers that doesn't really have ever been looked at by engineers. This one is a true symphony between the two groups of making the rifle and, and I think it makes for an extremely good gun. Available calibre range is 223, 243, 270, 308, 306, 65 Creedmoor. There's actually a 76239 as well. And depending on where you look on the UK website or on the CZ Czech website, there is actually also the availability in the larger actions of the 300 Win Mag, or all the way up to 300 Win Mag. This being a 223 is a sizable mini action. The other intermediate calibres will span between those, between the mini up to the 300 Win Mag, which is the largest. I would actually quite like to shoot one of these in 300 Win Mag because in terms of the linearity of the stock and the recoil pattern and things like that, although it'll be you know quite a pokey round, I think it's gonna have extremely good handling dynamics and Walnut does absorb and transfer recoil without any harmonic resonance and it's super comfortable. Many people were going to say, you know, oh, it's not got an adjustable cheek piece, it's not got this, it's not got that, but it's a hunting rifle. It's designed around a classic baseline, and I think CZ have done a cracking job of getting that traditional look and traditional feel with the ultra modern mechanics of a true modern action. They've used polymers where appropriate, steel where appropriate, and the bolt system, the manual ejector system is really a joy to use and it gives you that versatility to use the rifle and have the rifle perform exactly how you want it to.
Overall length is 1,097 millimetres, which is 43 and a quarter inches. Overall weight is 3.2 kilograms, which is 7 pound 3 ounces. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching that review. Please like, subscribe, comment, and don't forget to click the notification bell to keep track of the regular uploads. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.